Hey guys, this is your girl Nisi, the beauty icon. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you guys how I came up with this style. Uh, it's going to be highly detailed, so you don't want to miss a step. Stay tuned. So you want to make sure your foundation is sure before starting any quick weave. We have a part drawn out. So I'm going to start with the V-shaped track placement. And we're just going to fill in as much as we can. Then we're going to both sides to connect the sides with the back. So once we finish with the sideburn area, we can go in and, and just connect everything all at once. And here we're just following up with our V pattern all the way up. So now that I'm through on the shorter side, I'm filling in the, the fuller side. And you don't want to finish the whole head first. You want to make sure that you got a good place where you can start cutting the hair. So I slow this down to show you guys in real time what it looks like when I cut the hair. And I always hold the hair in my fingers so I can kind of gauge how much I'm cutting. So right here, you want to just make sure you, you're taking your time to fine detail that hair. So you never want to rush this portion of the process because you don't want chunks of hair gone or you don't want to uh, overcut. My goal really is when I'm cutting these short quick weaves is to um, just treat it like you would somebody's real hair. Like they'll be mad at you if you're, you have gashes of hair missing out of this hair. Even though it's not theirs, you have to treat it like it's theirs. So I encourage all you stylists who like to do quick weaves that are short, stop rushing through the process because it looks better once you slow down and just really, really take your time with cutting the hair. So in this portion of the hair, I want to make like a little curvature and this creates volume in the hair. And I want to make sure that I'm able to get it to connect to the other side once I do my curvature. Now I have got it to a place where I can just connect everything all at once again. So once we get to this place where we finish uh, adding the hair all the way up to the lines that I have drawn out, we're getting ready to start her part area. And so I'm going in with the invisible part method. And you want to make sure that your tracks are angled right. And you see how I'm placing the tracks right along the line that I have already drawn out. And you want to make sure that they're facing the right direction. And not only just facing the right direction, you want that curvature in those tracks as you're placing them so that hair can lay over each side. So we want to fill this in all the way up until we make a small little circular area for our closure. And I'm going and cutting the loose hairs off the part line. And right here, we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, just to fill in that other side of the part. So you can either use the closure that comes in the pack, or you can make one. I like to make mine, um, but I'm, I'm showing you guys how I did this closure right here. I just rolled it up really tightly. I always use black glue, guys. Uh, black glue just sticks better. And I know you guys might be wondering why I didn't use white instead, but I like the black glue because it, it sticks quicker. And my thing is just don't use so much glue. Just make sure that the glue is min at minimal so it don't seep through colored hair. With black hair is okay, but just make sure it doesn't seep through with your colored hair. So once I have all the tracks placed, sometimes I'll go in and wet the hair so I can kind of see the cut that I'm making um, so it can be a little bit more uh, visible. 
but you can either cut it wet or dry whatever uh you prefer is on you guys so don't be alarmed by uh wet in the hair but i i can just see sometimes better with wet hair And here I'm just kind of creating a guide around the perimeter of the head just to ensure that I create the style that she's looking for. Um, it's always good to start with a guide. So once it's cut, we can go ahead and mold it down. And I like to use my Nairobi foam when I mold this hair. So after we mold it, we're going to sit her in the dryer for about 30 minutes. Now fresh out the dryer, we're going to fine tune this cut and kind of uh, get some of the bulk up out of it. And I'm using my thinning shears here to do that. So this process here is all about detail. So you want to go in and, and just kind of detail your cut, make it li look a little bit softer, uh, a little bit more natural. So once that's done, I can go in and line, do a soft line up around the perimeter of her neck. So I'm going to go in and use my stay by straight request to kind of uh, put a hold on this hair when I get ready to curl it. And I'm not really doing full curls. I'm doing, doing more so a bump look. So I'll be using my one inch flat irons and then I'll take it to a half inch for the shorter pieces. So we're almost done with this uh, curl. Now we're going to go in and just do some finger play with it. Uh, nothing fancy, just uh, regular, messy, together. Whatever you feel in your spirit, do. So, so far, I'm feeling this style. It could be conservative. It could be sexy. It could be playful. Um, whatever the occasion, you know, this is the one of those styles you can just wear and jazz it up however you like. So she wanted this style off the forehead with a part, part look. And this is what I came up with. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit your post notification buttons for more updates. And I'll see you guys next video. You guys be blessed.